that's the thing that when I was studying for this week that kept resounding to me. It's like mm-hmm. he wants to have a relationship, a personal, intimate, direct. And so he became, I can't become like him. Mm-hmm. So he became like me. Let's talk about the Advent. What is Advent? I don't know. <laughs> What's so for a, you, I didn't grow up with Advent. I didn't either. I, I did. Mean, I had, had a Christmas calendar. Eve service and you got a bag of peanuts and an orange. You got a what? Yeah. <laughs> we had got, a calendar. You got food at Christmas Listen, Eve? Listen, Advent. That's a country church. Oh. A bag of oranges? And no, peanuts? not a bag of oranges. An orange in a bag of peanuts. So what does it represent? Just on orange and peanuts? <laughs> that is odd. Oh, that was pretty good. We had a calendar. Sometimes you get a peanut. We all have not a, a peanut calendar. Bowl. And uh, it yeah. had the chocolate in it, and it was a ball. countdown to Christmas. Popcorn ball. You got an Advent calendar? What kind of church do you go to? Uh, it was just at home. It wasn't church. <laughs> <laughs> home church. Innovative. Yeah. Your parents were I was, early in the movement. It was the, uh, it was the excitement of counting down to presents and having chocolate every day. Uh, there you go. Presents. So Paul, it was the first one around here that said we should do Advent, and I, I thought, I thought that was for other denominations. So I was kind of resistant. You were thinking, man, we got to like, get a lot of oranges and peanuts. No, because <laughs> that's what Christmas was. It was just, a, yeah, it wasn't that big of a deal. Mm-hmm. But, but Advent is what? What does it mean? I don't. I asked you the question, Jeff. Well, You're teaching you I, on this. I don't know. Well. We're not calling the series. Look it up. Now, what is the name of he the series? He shall be called. Yeah. He shall be called. Let's look it up. What is Advent? Theological work at its best right here. <laughs> He's asking Advent is if, Listen, you want an answer? Yeah, I didn't ask it. Let's see I didn't what, ask it. Let's see what Wikipedia <laughs> says. It is a... Is this Wikipedia? That's the Bible Project. Oh. It's probably accurate. It probably is then. Advent is a four-week season in the church calendar dedicated to anticipating the arrival of Advent. You can't use the word Christ. to define the word. In four weeks, we're, we're that's, behind. That's using the word to define the word. That doesn't work. <clears throat> Biden did that the other day. People made fun of him. <laughs> you can't do that. How about him? <laughs> we just got banned again. Uh, Christians from many backgrounds celebrate the time of reflection of hope, peace, love, and joy. That's the four themes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Or it's, it's the anticipation of the coming of Jesus. Yeah. I knew what it was. So a lot of you can look through Advent or the Advent season, it's often called, uh, with this anticipation of mm-hmm. a hope that is coming. Hope, joy, peace, love. Yep. And all those things are fulfilled in Christ. And so we're looking through it in the lens of who Christ is, what he has come to do, and what he has promised us into the future. We're using four names that were prophesied 700 plus years before the event by Isaiah in chapter 7 and chapter 9. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm doing Emmanuel this week. That's in 714. So Emmanuel means? God with us. God with us. Probably my favorite, one of my favorite Christmas songs. So come, oh come, Emmanuel. You think about like God with us. I'm preaching that same theme text this weekend. Do you notice how serious he just got? Next level. He turned, it, he turned it, is, it up. It is just because like that phrase. It, it's it's a total game changer. I mean, if you, mm-hmm. like. It is so easy just to read it and just keep moving on, but like God with us is a huge deal. So I, we just finished a Malachi series, or Malachi, a Haggai series. Right. And it ends with, I am with you. Yep. And I am going to continue to work my plan, essentially, is what God is saying to Zerubbabel. I'm going to continue to work in this, and I am with you. And then. We see the king of the Jews come on to the scene, Jesus. 520 years later. Uh-huh. After. God with us. I the, think it's a cool the, bridge the we accidentally silence. walked I, I into. Agree. The silence <laughs> totally between is, is pretty uh, <clears throat> inspiring, too. The fact that this, this that's the, the reason for Advent, the waiting, the, the anticipating. Because right. they, they, here's the Messiah. He's, he's coming. God's going to be with us 400 years. 
waiting, waiting, mm-hmm. waiting, waiting. And then he explodes onto the scene. I was listening to a new uh, new Christmas song by Phil Wickham. The Yeah. The Manger uh-huh. Throne. Hmm. Wow, that's, that's powerful. It is. Very powerful. I heard that. You this could week have too. come you could have come and, and turned over Rome, but instead you came and born, were born in a manger. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Like, I hope we're gonna sing that. It's a tough one though. To learn this quickly. Hmm. I think the so one of the things that's consistent all throughout scripture is God intervening and intersecting with his people to bring about his glory and his purpose, right? And so the big thing whenever I hear like Emmanuel is the <laughs> the intensity is ratcheting up. It's God's presence has been with his people bringing about his purpose, but now he's not he's not just a God that's you know interacting from a distance type deal through priests and you know sacrifices he's a god that's walking with us well you used to use the word walking like for me when i started this message i went back to genesis 3 mm. because mm-hmm. it's like the idea of god wanting to be with his creation has been the theme and the goal since the very beginning mm-hmm. and so you know when you read in genesis 3 8 and 9 that he was walking in the cool of the day like that phrase walking in the cool of the day doesn't really actually paint a picture of what because in our mind we think oh, like leisurely stroll down the trek trail that's not what's happening mm-hmm. like he is he is actively pursuing it's almost like a child that's lost you ever lost a kid no i have not i have lost a kid uh <laughs> chill out <laughs> but when you lose a kid you like you pursue that kid and you're you're yelling the name like i lost a kid in a corn maze one time <laughs> terrifying but that's the that's the picture like he's pursuing them he's coming after you and they're off hiding because they've done the one thing he said not to do mm. but before that cuz that's that's because they have sinned mm-hmm. right so that's the pursuit element before that there wasn't a pursuit there's a there's a togetherness yeah yeah that's the beauty of a fulfillment enjoyment completion and that's where yeah. we're headed yep with, with heaven uh when it's all restored we, we're reading um we're trying we're not very good sometimes at not a lot of times at uh family devotions are hard right they're, they're difficult but we're doing luke right now and we're doing the um read the chapter started on on december 1st so Luke one, uh, and moving so f- moving forward, but we were reading about Gabriel breaking mm. the silence. Mm. <clears throat> it's incredible. His descriptor of himself when he he identifies, um, verse eighteen. Zechariah asked the angel, "How can I be sure of this? I am an old man." So Zechariah and Elizabeth going to have John the Baptist. I am an old man, and my wife is well along in years. The angel answered, "I am Gabriel." I stand in the presence of God. Hmm. I stand in the presence of God. We stopped when we were reading that. And Michelle's like, that phrase is so powerful because we don't do that. Mm-hmm. We can't do that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? And so we've had all of this history of, of separation from God because of sin, all of these barriers and sacrifices required just to get close. Right, you have to have a representation with the priest to go in for you, and all of that separation. And Gabriel shows up and says, "I stand in the presence of God," and it's a a little hint of where we're headed in the story, because God's going to come and stand in the presence of man. Mm-hmm. That's pretty awesome. To me, to me, uh, I, I went back and reread. Uh, the early sections of God came near by Max Lucado because he talks about the incarnation and what what this really means that that God became flesh and his word that he uses over and over again is this is just absurd it's it's ridiculous that God would would the Creator when we talk about it in Colossians or if you go to John chapter one or back in Genesis the Creator. So through the power of Jesus, the Word, everything is made. 
And he says, I'm going to now, I'm now as Jesus going to limit myself to nine months in the womb. That's absurd. Mm -hmm. There's two, two elements. I'm going to, I don't know how you're going to develop yours. I'm, I'm going to talk about two main things that, that I see in the story. One is what he did. Like that, that fact that he became flesh, that he became a human, that he took on weakness, he humbled himself, all of that, Philippians chapter 2. And then why? Because both of those ideas are absurd. I mean, the plan of God to, uh, to become a man. Why did, he, why did he do that? Why didn't he just save us? That's, that's something, yeah. Because it's ultimately satisfaction of God's wrath against sin, death, destruction. And the wrath is against humans. Yeah. People. Which is crazy because he he's God, right? He could have done it any other way. If it was just a task to be done. But this is what sets Christianity apart from anything else is that it's not just a transactional relationship. It is a relationship like on every level. So it's not just this check the box type deal, you know, do do your thing and oh, you're saved. Like God of the universe, the creator of all things wants a actual relationship with you. And that's why he sent Jesus to show us what it looks like to walk in relationship with him. Yeah, he didn't have to do it that way. No. He could have been like, "All right, everyone's forgiven." <laughs> but like, he wanted a relationship. That's the thing that when I was studying for this week that kept resounding to me. It's like mm -hmm. he wants to have a relationship, a personal, intimate, direct. And so he became, I can't become like him. Mm -hmm. So he became like me. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. That is crazy. I've got a picture of, um, <clears throat> it's my dad who has, you know, this massive hand in this picture. Um, and it's even a better picture now that because he's gone. So it's more meaningful. But he's got our firstborn. It's a black and white picture. He's got our firstborn's head in his hand. And his hand is bigger than Anthony's head. Hmm. Kind of wraps around it, you know. I don't know. This, the, that, the picture came to my mind when I was thinking about this concept. That God, God came here. To, to wrap himself around us, to be like us, to, to hold us, to, to be with us, to take care of our deepest need. The, that, that love for us is beyond comprehension, really. We mm -hmm. can't sacrifice that much to love anyone, I don't think. What he did in, in giving himself, becoming like us, limiting himself, taking on death, you know, Paul says in Philippians 2, even death on a cross. That's, a, that's absurd. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's Advent. Hmm. Anything else you want to share? Because you're doing the sermon too. I guess what, <sighs> struck, what struck me is that he'd actually want to be with me. I mean... Yeah, anyone that's spent any time with you <laughs> understands that statement. For real. <laughs> None of us can figure out Megan. <laughs> This is obviously the the first Christmas that we're going to have without my dad. And Thanksgiving was, was weird because he wasn't there and he loved Thanksgiving. Um, and he would have always taken his, his Bible that's on my desk and we would have read Luke 2 together, uh, whether we wanted to or not. And we did that every year growing up. And... Just sitting there talking to my, my mom on the phone about the fact that, like, this Christmas, we may not have Dad, but we've got God with us. Mm. And no matter what you're facing in this life, God's with you. Mm -hmm. That, that to me, is just, well, it truly is life-altering, that the God of the universe is with me. It is a really big deal that... Jesus is God. Mm -hmm. That that's a part of this story that can't be overlooked. This is God with us. Mm -hmm. Jesus is. 
God. I don't understand three parts in one, you know, Father, Son, Spirit, but Jesus is God. He's not a creation of God. He wasn't birthed. I, I, there's a theological idea that, you know, this is Mary and this new creation of God. No, this is God miraculously taking on flesh. That's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Um, so he is God. Not not Mary and Joseph's. The virgin birth is a big deal. Mm -hmm. That's a part of the story. I think we need to talk about it a little bit, um, because that's you know, I read a statistic like thirty, only like thirty percent of Christians really believe that Mary was a virgin. Mm -hmm. I think we're playing our lives really? onto her life. Mm -hmm. hmm. You know. Uh, that's a that's a part of the story that's that's huge. Yeah, only thirty percent. Yeah, it wasn't very high. Wow. I don't. People have a hard time understanding and grasping and accepting that part of the story. I think that's a devil's work in part. Conceived by the Holy Spirit. I mean, that's yeah. the Word of God. <laughs> well, interpretation. Yeah. Raw. Uh, yeah. Hmm. But it's a big deal. Yeah. But I mean, if if God can't do that, what, why is that such a hard thing to accept? That God could become flesh, take on flesh, could become a man. Why is that hard to accept? The same God who spoke and created, mm -hmm. the same God who died and resurrected from the dead, the same God who walked on water. I mean, we accept a lot of Christians accept those things as occurring, but yes, I was going to wonder how many of those. Yeah, those, yeah. it would be an interesting survey. Right. But we, we you have to start with this is God taking on flesh. This is this is God becoming a man, Emmanuel, God with us, for all people, anybody that would turn. I mean, for me, whenever I read Matthew chapter one, I can't get over the background story of all the people in the family tree. I get stuck there <laughs> quite often because that's a rodeo. It's it's a mess. Like you you thought your family Christmas was going to be <laughs> tore up from the floor up. Look at that. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's for everybody. Mm -hmm. No matter what you've done, it's for you. He's for you. So this is God becoming a man, and then he's sinless to be a sacrifice. It's 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 a beautiful story. Yeah, it's it's it. You're right. That concept though is like people have tried to explain it. 100% man, 100% God, and yeah. it it is one of those things. I think, you know, that's where that's where faith comes in because our rational minds like are not I don't believe well, we're able to fully comprehend that and it's because were, we're not God. I was just say if you were able to comprehend it, would he really be God? <laughs> right. You know that's, what I mean? Like we say that a lot. We've heard we said that a lot around this table. Some things we can't understand and that's okay. Yeah. He's choosing to, you know, that's how Paul describes it. He's choosing to limit himself. He's humbling himself. Mm -hmm. So at any moment, he could have done anything, but he doesn't. You know, the temptations by, by the devil in, in the desert to turn the stone into, he could do that. He could do anything. Put away your sword. I could call 10,000 angels, and I think, you don't even need the angels. All he's got to do is... <laughs> Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. We can stop this. That's a whole other conversation because right. someone asked me, and I know your answer to this, do you take off deity, put on humanity? Yeah, that's a, that that's, is a uh, um, heresy of the... Exactly. What, second, third century? But that's that's the that's a question I've got. Mm -hmm. He didn't take off, he coexisted. He, exactly. Mm-hmm. Right. But that's another. That's and he gives us glimpses of it at times. You know, he resurrects people from the dead. He does walk on water. Yeah. He does heal miraculously. He resurrects himself from the dead. He put, calls Lazarus out. He. Yep. That's that's deity. Yep. But he. <laughs> he chooses to contain that, and be man. But I'm gonna say that Sunday because he didn't take off deity. Yeah. He was like both. he is 100 percent God. He is 100 percent man. And you're not. And you're <laughs> That's why you don't understand. So believe this. this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm serious. Like, right. Those are deep theological issues, but they really matter. They matter. They, they matter because if he is an all sufficient sacrifice, 
How can that be? Well, he has to be perfect, right? And he has to, he has to be one of us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So he has to be man. But he's, he's perfect. <laughs> but yet tempted in every way. Yeah, it's a cool. But did not sin. It's not That's just really a important little too. Christmas story. Feel yeah. goods and eat your oranges and peanuts in a paper sack. Yeah, I'm glad we don't do that. I mean, this is deep. <laughs> it is. God with us. Yeah. But that's the answer to our need. Yep. Hey, just to point out that um, most likely the biblical uh, account of Jesus being born is not in December. Just I want to make that point. Always got to be one guy. Here we go. So just... Just for all you, uh, you April? know, huh? I've heard March, April. April. Uh, you know, based upon our last trip to Israel, yeah, it was either going to be the spring or the fall because summertime, everything's dead, right? In the wintertime, everything's dead. And the shepherds were out tending their flock. So you got two possible scenarios of either spring or fall. They're not out <laughs> tending their flocks in December. Right. So December is out for sure. Summertime's out for sure, but February, there are March. The grass is starting to come green, right? And you still have it before it dies. In the mm-hmm. you have so another Jesus you know, wasn't born on Christmas Day. No, so I'm sorry. That's going to be false. December twenty fifth is not his birthday. Jeez. He didn't begin his existence then either. <laughs> Whenever he was born, <laughs> that's what I like to tell people. Do is Santa real? <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> right into it. Elf on the shelf too. That's my. That's that's those are real. You know what those are good for? Elf on the shelf. Target practice. Target practice. That's uh-huh. exactly. I give my kids Nerf guns and. That's why I'm uh, Jeff's personal security. Elf on the shelf. <laughs> uh, it's, it, Elf on everybody <laughs> likes Christmas season. Not everybody probably, but most people really like it. Didn't happen in December, but what happened was really important. Yeah. God became one of us. You guys hear that sound of beautiful sound of Christmas? Yeah, it's Christmas programs. The sound kids singing Christmas songs of oranges and peanuts being passed out. Are you gonna have oranges <laughs> and peanuts at the kids' Christmas program? I wasn't gonna come. We are now. <laughs> I'll be here. <laughs> Thanks for joining us from all over the world. <laughs> I'm a rethink. Hey, you have 26 <laughs> followers now. Woo!